Everyone, welcome to another uh, Founder Wisdom podcast. Today with us, we have Plamen Penev. He is a co-founder and CPO at Stage AI. So we're going to talk AI. Uh, he is in Sofia, Bulgaria. So we're going to have a bunch of interesting topics for you today. Plamen, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about Stage. Hi, Charles. Thank you for having me. So uh, my name is Plamen. I'm located in Sofia, Bulgaria. And... I studied in the UK and uh, I came back to Bulgaria and started a software startup with a university buddy of mine. Uh, Stage AI is mostly in the area of smart cities and Internet of Things uh, analytics software. So we're working with a lot of energy retailers, water utilities companies, and we're trying to apply machine learning and analytics methodologies to solve problems in city networks. Pretty interesting. Uh, quick opener. What do you think about Elon Musk's um, strategy and what kind of impact will it have on uh, city and energy? Elon Musk's, well, I think uh, he definitely has some right ideas, uh, especially with the Solar X project. project. I mean, solar energy is a big part of the solution, but it's it's obviously not enough. And I think uh, a big problem is the engineering of the smart grid itself, because only adding uh, sustainable um, sources of energy will not really be uh, solving the problems of the underlying grid, which is more than 150 years old, basically, you know. Yeah. Have you followed like what's happening in South Africa with the energy blackouts? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I think... That's another uh, symptom of uh, that uh, we're reaching a level of uh, development in, in many cities where just the underlying infrastructure, the underlying networks like transport, water and energy are not sufficiently well engineered and managed in order to, to be able to scale um, massively as it, as it is coming to be. What about uh, the Saudi Arabia project? I think they call it the wall or whatever. Um, it's this yeah. modern city, like, and apparently a million people are going to be able to live in between those walls. Have you evaluated yeah. the projects and what uh, insights have you got from there? It, I, I'm, to be honest with you, it does look very interesting. It's quite experimental, in my opinion, because from the things that I've read, especially with some of the Chinese experiments into new cities. Like, it's very hard to start a new city, you know. There is something about uh, a place that has been uh, there for uh, many centuries that has developed, that has a certain spirit or, uh, you know, whatever it could be. But it's very hard to make people live in a new city and try to really engineer it uh, fully. So I think that it's an interesting direction. It should be explored and certainly will bring some technological advancements. But uh, I'm really more thinking on uh, how do we uh, save and how do we uh, make our uh, already existing cities better? Because to be honest, in reality, it's the most uh, like surviving unit of human civilization. Like many civilizations and uh, nations have gone and have come and gone, but cities remain, you know, very often. Yeah, for sure. And how do you actually make cities more optimal from an energy perspective, from a water perspective, from a transport perspective? Yeah, well, um, one major idea that's been uh, uh, being pushed on into the public is the smart cities uh, movement, which, of course, is uh, in, a, in a sense, trying to apply the technologies of machine learning, Internet of Things, you know, the uh, new sensors and uh, communication networks that can be applied. But in reality, we really need to be thinking more about how do we make cities more inclusive and, uh, and also how do we make cities responsive. You know, because that's that's one thing that the technology of AI and machine learning could really provide to us, you know, and I really think that in terms of transport networks, we obviously we're already doing quite a bit of that into optimizing those in terms of energy and uh, water networks. I don't think we are quite up to most cities are not really up to the level that need to be, especially when you see in the types of water losses, for example, that cities sustain. You know, in uh, some places around in my country, there are like 60 to 70 percent water losses accepted, which is which is uh, like absurd. You know, if you uh, think about uh, it's really not a problem of water shortages. It's a problem of water management in most places. You know, when you say water loss, like where does the water go? Is it uh, just that it's polluted and not reusable? What, what do you mean by that? 
very often it is just that they don't know like it they don't know the where the leaks are so they don't really have good enough uh, detection systems so a lot of the water is just leaking into the ground that's that's the reality of things you know and mm. uh, that's another area that machine learning could really help uh, in the development and uh, scaling of energy and uh, water networks, like anomaly detection, as well as um, just discovering uh, problems early on and uh, uh, security as well. Because as you, as you well know, like those types of uh, networks are very often the target of attacks, you know. Yeah, machine learning can probably help to understand and see where the leak is in the pipeline. I would guess, yeah. I mean, I'm not deep in that area, but I, I can also guess that uh, bots could be very helpful to crawl uh, these pipes, you know, and know exactly where the, yeah. the 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 shortage is and where the hole is and kind of um, fill, fill the hole so that it stops leaking or something. Have you exactly. seen innovation yeah. in, in robotics in your area? Well, uh, we're most only, mostly on the software part and the uh, machine learning part, but we have explored quite a bit of uh, innovations in the sensors and uh, embedded systems as well. And uh, yeah, there are quite a few uh, interesting projects in terms of smart pipes, for example, uh, and uh, so on. So yeah, definitely the hardware part will be really important as well. Interesting. And where do you apply uh, machine learning for transport? Is it like Uber just optimizing the 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 roads and the the time at at which where people spend more time on lights where the traffic is and trying to unblock that yeah that's that's one big part uh one project that we have uh, actually taken a part of uh, with stage AI has been for smart parking so basically having a, a sensor in each uh, parking spot around in the city center uh, that was the the project scope and being able to not only see if the area that you're going to will have any free spots, but also uh, we were working on a model that was giving a prediction. So basically, based on the your time of arrival from where we are going, from where we are starting to where you're going, we give you a, a prediction of um, whether when you get there, you uh, there is a good chance that uh, there is a spot or not really. And maybe you should uh, head to a slightly a different area where there will be a better chance for you to have a, a spot. How do you get your new clients? How complex is it to get in touch with cities and to convert them into clients? Well, yeah, that's a, um, that's one uh, a part that's actually quite hard in, the, in that business because as you well know, administrations, municipalities, they're a bit slow to react. They're a bit, uh, in a way, um, conservative. Uh, but uh, I think um, we, we're really working with a lot of uh, private companies as well, like energy retailers, as well as water utilities. And we try to get through them to uh, help us put pressure on the administrative and municipal bodies. And then how much do you charge typically for your software? Is it pure custom? Uh, like how, how do you go with the, the price? It's mostly custom, yeah. It's mostly custom to to the particular client because there are a lot of uh, different options that we can add on uh, as a software as a service, as an on-premise system. It depends on uh, if they only want uh, uh, to get, for example, predictions of their of their interest in the uh, control part because a lot of the water utilities have a lot of units that they need control of, like pump stations, water treatment uh, stations, and. Uh, to be honest, there the development is early, is an early stage, but uh, we see the possibilities of applying like re reinforcement learning and uh, again, machine learning methodologies to control as well. Now, maybe not uh, right away directly, but in the terms of digital operators and um, uh, recommendations towards the, the real life operators. Okay. And for the price you build like hourly, is it like, oh, we charge a hundred bucks an hour and then we will spend X amount of time on your project? No, we we basically have tiers of uh, features that uh, get unlocked uh, into the different tiers, and uh, yeah, we base um, we base the, um, the payment on that. I've got a thought with uh, with Saudi and um, and other cities. Um, what's mm -hmm. that's pretty much of actuality uh, this week and and last week. What and and why Silicon Valley is is currently partnering up with Saudi. I mean, it, the reason is pretty clear. It's not because uh, people think that, you know, Saudi are, are great human beings or respect human yeah. rights. You know, it's <laughs> more it's more because Saudi 
is innovating, is taking risk and is doing moonshots as a government. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of respect for that because most governments, like you said, um, in the world, they're conservative. You go into a government job because you're you want your nine to five, you want your paycheck. And first thing first, this is going to disappear with ChatGPT, you know, like uh, I think yeah. bureaucrats are going to be the first to be replaced because they don't innovate. Sure. They don't get often out of their comfort zones, at least at the the bottom of the pyramid. And even mm -hmm. at the top of the pyramid, most most of the time, it's it's people that want to go there for soft retirement, you know. Um, yeah. So that absolutely needs to change. And the other reason for that is that. Um, we're seeing the government lose more and more of its grip, you know, with the with the mm -hmm. taxes. Uh, there's a good book on that, um, the sovereign individual, and basically, governments are now competing against businesses. And what the the Saudi government is doing with its smart cities and its other moonshots, it's competing against other business uh, businesses to make project. For example, OpenAI. I think they're going to be so big that. Yeah, literally, they're going to have the same resources as a country, right? And what yeah. happens when you, you do have that? Well, you start acting as a government. We, we've seen Sam Altman um, start deepening the, the conversation um, about a un, universal basic income. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it is imperative that government starts acting more um, as a business like Saudi does, obviously, on the human rights front, they, they have a lot of homework to do. But what yeah. are your, your thoughts on that, um, uh, about the, the yeah. whole uh, smart city thing and moonshot and innovating as a government? Definitely, I think. Well, uh, well another thing is um, the pressure that they have. So basically, when you're pressured uh, by environmental factors and uh, other uh, types of factors, you really kind of push to innovate. Like, for example, look at Singapore. Like, they're the best example of a smart city, uh, I think, on Earth today. Maybe Seoul, you know, in uh, South Korea. But uh, I think Singapore, are for sure, uh, on top of things. And, and why is that? Because they don't really have any other choice. I mean, they have so little space. They have so uh, uh, many environmental pressures. So they really have to innovate. Like, uh, did you know that, for example, they they are, um, they uh, collect all uh, rainfall water and uh, all of it is, uh, once it gets into the cycle of their water uh, systems, uh, it keeps going like it. They don't lose a drop. Like, <laughs> well, compared to uh, many other places that, uh, like, for example, in Bulgaria, where we have we have like so much water, like uh, we are really rich in waters. And at the same time, our management is so poor that uh, there are uh, cities from the last two years that have had shortages and uh, water regimes as well. So I think it's it's definitely the, um, uh, the, the environmental factors as well. But as a whole, as you said, uh, other governments should really be uh, looking to uh, those examples and uh, pushing their own uh, incentives. And uh, because, because otherwise, it will, as you say, it will be too late and there will be businesses that have already uh, surpassed them in many ways. Well, Simon, thank you so much. I was really rapid fire. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, so I have my Twitter. Uh, it's uh, pdpnf1. Uh, and uh, and I'm also, um, I'm, I'm starting a, a small block on data science and system science as well because that's my other passion really. I think that uh, all the machine learning and all the analytics stuff are really uh, not going to be uh, as useful as uh, possible if we don't apply hardcore theory. And the hardcore theory of uh, is really system science and network science, uh, where you could really start analyzing cities and uh, countries as uh, whole systems. Love so it, yeah, I'll be writing on that, but I'll be sharing that on Twitter. So uh, if you follow that, thank you.